am Dave. I'm just waiting for the day when I can replace my car, which has a range of about 220, 240 miles, realistically, uh, with one that can do 400 miles or more, because that will dramatically change my EV experience and costs. Dave Takes It On has a look at what's going to happen to all these EV chargers out there when the range of cars increases so we don't actually need them. So anyway, let's just give you a typical example. I've got family, like many people, we were dotted all over the place. Um, I've got a sister who lives about uh, 50 mile away, 100 mile round trip. That's easily doable from home charging. Fill it up, go and see, come back again. That's fine. Got a brother who lives in America. That's okay, a very different situation. Uh, but I've got a son, Jonas, who lives in Preston, just a few miles away. Uh, but my other son lives, uh, one of the middle son lives in Swansea. Uh, and that's about 240, 250 miles away. Uh, so just beyond the limit of what I would comfortably do. And my other son lived way down in Cornwall, 360 miles away. I can't, I can't hope to reach him on a single charge. However, mine is an old car. It's eight years old now in technology terms, but none of you have got an eight year old uh, smartphone, but no one's got an eight year old tablet and very few of you would probably have an eight year old TV. My, my car's quite out of date. The newer ones, if I was to replace that with say a Model Y uh, or a Model 3, sticking with Tesla, I would have a range which is well into the 300s and, and possibly with a bit of careful driving, up towards 400 miles in a single trip. And what that means, let's take my middle son. He lives in Swansea, 250 miles away. If I could do 300 miles comfortably, uh, then when I go down to see him, I don't need to charge on the way. So I will top up here overnight up to 100%. Uh, that will give me 300, 350 mile range and I'm charging up at seven and a half pence a kilowatt hour. So it, it, it takes I don't know, about six quid to fill a battery. I would then be able to jump in the car, drive down there. I would probably still stop, but I almost certainly wouldn't charge. And that's because I don't need to. So I would get down to Swansea still with maybe 50 or 100 mile range left. And I've got the, I'm going to be staying there and I've got the return journey. Uh, so I've got to get back up to about 300 miles. Now, at the moment, my middle son does not have an EV, but he does have an outside plug. And I would be quite happy to just plug in there uh, overnight. As it happens, I don't stay with him when we go down there. He, he has a full house. He doesn't have sufficient room uh, to put myself and my wife up. So we tend to stay in a hotel or a bed and breakfast nearby. And often when I do that, I use a hotel. One of them, for example, is the Dragon Hotel right in the centre of Swansea. And that one offers free charging to guests. And the price of the rooms is very little different than going for a B&B &B or anything like that. So I can happily go there, plug in, and it's not an overnight tariff, it's just available to guests. So when I get there, whatever time it is, I just plug in. And usually by the time I'm going out and about on things, uh, the car's recharged. But if it doesn't, just leave it plugged in overnight. And the same with coming back. Uh, I would charge it up there, but at the moment I can't quite get back on a full charge. I'd have to do a top up on the way. But again, if I have a Model Y and I can do over 300 mile on a charge, um, I could drive from here, drive down to see uh, my middle son, uh, stay a couple of days, um, either at his or in a hotel, charge up while I'm there, either at my son's or at the hotel, and then drive back and, and get back without having to charge. And that rather puts all these new superchargers and grid serves and Ospreys and Ionities out of business. Because the only reason I was using them before was because my car had uh, about a 220, 230 mile range. Once that gets up to about 350 or 400, most of us will no longer have a need to charge at all 
are en route. Now, we might choose to. So, for example, recently I went down to Bristol. So recently I went down to Bristol and I found out down there that's off peak and that's not silly hours in the morning this is between 4 a.m and 10 a.m i can charge for 25 pence a kilowatt hour and at that price if i was at my son's uh, house uh, charging at the normal uh, standard variable rate is 27p uh, it's it's actually cheaper than that so when i choose to stop let's say i'm stopping for lunch um, and um, there's a Tesla supercharger nearby at 25 pence, I may, might well be tempted just to top up. Um, it, it's about the same price. If, on the other hand, my destination has a free charger, like the Dragon Hotel, I, I wouldn't consider putting anything in. So my need will be changing, and it means I'll be able to charge at home, I'll be able to get to my destination without having to stop, although I will choose to stop. I can't drive three or four hours, five hours without stopping, but I may not charge when I stop. When I get down to Cornwall, again, that's getting to be, um, cars are getting to be near the point where I can get 360 miles down to Cornwall in one go. I can't drive that far. I, I have done it. Uh, I had a major catastrophe a while ago and I had to get down to Cornwall and I drove down virtually non-stop. I had to stop once, uh, I think at least once for a toilet break, um, I think once for a coffee or so, or lunch or something, because uh, about five or six hours just solid driving. But again, if I can get down there and stay with my son and plug in down there, then I won't need to charge on the way. And that all brings me back to the whole reason for the video, and that is we are shouting at the moment. The government is saying we need 500,000 chargers to be able to cope with the demand when more and more people go EVs. And for all you doubters out there, we are still going for a big time for EVs. It's still growing everywhere. A couple of places, it's not much of a growth, slight reduction, but overall it's a very big increase. So, do we actually need 500,000 chargers? And I'm beginning to think that we've just had another announcement from Toyota. Uh, they've cracked the uh, solid state battery and in 2027 they'll be launching their car that will uh, destroy Tesla and every... Yeah, we've heard it every single year for the last 10 years, so don't anticipate that's on its way. However... Um, CATL, Chinese company, have actually launched a battery and it's already being manufactured in mass production. This is not theoretical and it's the battery that will be going into the refresh of the Tesla Model Y. And this one has a realistic range of 400 miles on a Tesla size battery and it's offering a recharge uh, facility within about 10 to 15 minutes. Th this is almost down to the speed of uh, filling up at a petrol station nowadays. So if that battery goes into the Model Y, and if next year I decide when this is available to replace my car and buy a Model Y, I will be able to drive down to Cornwall 400 miles without stopping or without having to charge on the way. I will still stop. I'll be easily able to go and see my son in Swansea, uh, do a little bit of a top up there and come back. And all of a sudden, I, and I'm sure many others, will just be driving past all these brand new, shiny new chargers, ultra 350, 360 kilowatts, um, or everything, you know, 800 volts and uh, whatever it is, and not using them. And I know this hasn't happened now, and when it does happen, the Model Y refresh with the new battery um, won't do anything for the Model Ys that are already on the road and do have a range near a 300 mile. Um, but even that one, you see, if I bought a used one, now a year old or so, um, that would give me 300 mile range, so I could certainly get down to Swansea without having to stop. And I think that's going to become the phrase. I will be able to get somewhere without having to stop. I might choose to stop for a toilet break, for a coffee, or even for a lunch. Uh, my wife and I do like, on a journey, stopping off for lunch. It breaks up the journey, um, and it just makes it a lot more pleasant. And at the moment, we usually stop somewhere where we can charge. 
But in the future, this could be very different. So I'm beginning to think we don't need anything like 500,000 charges out there. That's just a ludicrous figure done by cretins and morons who actually don't understand anything. Um, we, we will need some, uh, for example, if you can't charge at home, you will need some on the road. And you'll also have uh, people who are working, the reps on the road and delivery drivers who will need to charge in between. But that will not be the majority of the drivers. You see, the majority of drivers charge at home. The majority of drivers do one, two or three trips a year where they go beyond the range of their car at the moment and have to charge on the road. But when they don't have to go beyond the range of the car because the range has increased, all of a sudden we don't need as many charges. Anyway, be fascinated to hear what you think about this. I've had a number of viewers uh, commenting that they are at the moment uh, staying with friends who also have an EV. So when they go down there, they plug their car in there. When their friends come up to them, they plug in at their place. And that is a reciprocal, reciprocal arrangement. And if my middle son in Swansea ever gets an EV, he almost certainly will, he uses his car for business, so he almost certainly will have a home charger. Uh, and he, when he comes up here, will be able to charge here and I'll be able to charge there. And because a typical EV, uh, Tesla Model 3 or Model S, only costs about six quid to fill a battery up from flat, neither of us are going to be charging each other for it. It'll just be, yeah, plug in here and I'll plug in there. So, is this your experience? How do you find things? And what do you think about the number of uh, rapid and ultra rapid charges that we're going to need on the road these days? Thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave.